snap to cover. Tutorial. Hey, how's it going? I'm Tobin from SnapToCover.com and welcome to our virtual demo day where we're going to be teaching you how to play Mercs by Mercs Minis. But a question first, have you ever played a miniature war game before? Okay, so you've never played a miniature war game before and that's perfect. Let me take you through Miniature Wargaming 101. Miniature war games are a style of tabletop game similar to the board games you may have played growing up. Unlike board games though, they usually don't have a board. There's certain exceptions where they do, but most don't. Instead, they have a set play area. It might be a four foot by four foot board, for example. Uh, the area that you play on is considered the battlefield. People use uh, homemade and store-bought terrain. These can be buildings or trees, and these add character to your battlefield. This alone adds endless possibilities to your games, as you can move the terrain anywhere you like. Next, what would a miniature war game be without miniature warriors? Each game comes with its own set of rules, like this rulebook here by Mercs Minis, and miniature warriors, or minis, that are used on the battlefield to represent your soldiers. It's a lot of fun collecting building and painting your miniatures. You really get to add your own personal character to your miniatures. When you bring it into a game store and you play against your opponent with all of your miniatures painted just the way you want them and you paint them pretty well, uh, you get a lot of pride after seeing your opponent go, wow, look at that. I can't believe you, you painted that. That looks amazing. The rules for each game differ, but they all generally stick to two main mechanics. As there's no grid, games allow for free movement through the use of measuring devices. In most games, this is as simple as a tape measure. Actions for the models take a pass or fail approach through the use of rolling dice or flipping cards. Also, there's a miniature game for almost every genre you can think of. From fantasy to steampunk, or historical all the way to sci-fi. There's bound to be a type of miniature war game that fits your personal taste. There are two general sizes to miniature war games. You have your large scale games and your skirmish size games. Your skirmish size games only have a handful of models, while your larger scale games, such as 40k, require many, many, many models. Both have their strengths and weaknesses, and both are extremely fun in their own right. If this still sounds like fun to you, then let's jump in and learn what Mercs is. All right, so you know what a miniature war game is. That's awesome. Now, what is Mercs? Mercs is a near future skirmish level war game set in a world where governments have been taken over by massive corporations called Megacons. The Megacons use hired soldiers called Mercs to fight for resources and territory across the globe. In Mercs, you control a single squad of Mercs comprised of five models, each with their own unique abilities, strengths, and weaknesses. It's up to you as the player to have your models work as a team and gain victory over your opponents. To play Mercs, you'll first need to decide on your army. There are currently nine Megacons released for the game. CCC are the masters of nanites. They use these in their armor, allowing it to fix itself. They also have two heavies, one with a flamethrower, the other with a minigun. FCC House 9 isn't actually a Megacon. They're a group of rebel fighters trying to end all Megacons. They sometimes, though, take on a Merc from a Megacon as a Black Ops. ISS are a fast, amphibious Megacon akin to pirates. They have the unique ability to move a card length before the game begins. This can make them extremely fast. Also, one of their Mercs has a deployable turret providing extra firepower. Kaisewaza are a Megacon from Japan. The big draw for them is their tactical nuke. Yes, that's right. They bring a small nuclear missile into battle. It can take a lot of skill to get off, but when they do, oh boy. Cephidu is currently the fastest Megacon in the game. They use this speed to rack up modifiers and keep the enemy on their toes. Texaco are a throwback to the wild, wild west. They use set up traps, call bounties, and if all else fails, they sick their dog on you. USCR are more akin to tanks than infantry. They have the strongest armor and some deadly firepower. They also have the Behemoth, a suit of armor that allowed them to fight off an entire House 9 invasion single-handedly. 
FCC House 4 are another rebel group like their brothers in House 9. Their strategy is different though. Instead of taking other mercs as black ops, they take other mercs as hostages. Chemvar are an energy powerhouse. They manipulate fields of energy around their mercs to make them nearly invisible on the battlefield. Okay, so hopefully after that you know exactly what Megacon, or at least have a good idea of what Megacon you want to play. Now let's go over what exactly you need to start playing. In mercs, you need three things. You need models, you need cards for those models, and you need dice. For models, you're going to want to choose any five models from the Megacon that you choose. You're also going to want five of the cards that correspond with those given models, and you're going to want five ten-sided dice. To make things easy, Mercs has come up with their Megacon starter set. These things are probably the best way to get into Mercs. They come with six models, giving you a chance to try out different combinations of five. They also come with six cards for those models and six ten-sided dice. So you'll have all the dice, all the cards, all the models that you need. They also come with the quick start rules. The only thing that you don't get in this is the rule book, which would give you the advanced rules and some rules clarification that aren't on the actual card they insert for quick start rules. Now that you know what Mercs is, let's learn how to play. All right, so let's look at the cards first because it's gonna give you all the information you need to know about your models. Also, the cards are your movement templates. The large cutout at the bottom is what you place around your model. You can angle it in any direction, and then you can move your model to one of the smaller cutouts on the left, top, and right side. How many cards you can move is told in the red circle in the top left-hand corner. This is your MP or your movement points. The blue circle on the top right-hand corner is your reaction. This is used to break up ties and initiative, it's also the number that the enemy model needs to roll at or above in order to hit you in melee combat. Each merc is given one or more weapons. Each weapon's description tells how many shots they get and how many targets it affects. In this case, two attacks versus one target. Each ranged weapon has an FN or firing number. To hit the enemy, you need to roll this number or higher, plus or minus a few modifiers. On a successful hit, the weapon's strength is compared to that of the target's armor value. If the weapon's strength is equal to or greater than the enemy's armor value, the result is blood loss from the enemy model. When a model loses all of its blood, they die. A med kit can be used to heal a wounded model. Whether or not a model causes blood or not, it must take an armor failure check. If it rolls lower than its armor failure check value, its armor breaks. This results in negative 2 MP and negative one armor value. It's important to note that a model's armor can only break once. It can be repaired successfully though with a successful repair roll or through the use of a repair kit. Lastly, we have personal and corporate abilities. Personal abilities are individual abilities that are used by this specific model, or corporate abilities are abilities shared by everyone inside of the Megacon. All right, so let's go over what models we brought for this demo and let's go into actually the mechanics and then start playing. All right, so for this demo, we've decided to pit the Chemvar versus the USCR. And instead of doing a normal three by two foot board with five models, we decided to use the demo board, which is a two by two foot board and use three models a piece. For Chemvar, we're bringing the Chemvar Assassin, the Chemvar Monkey Wrench, and the Chemvar Assault Leader. For the USCR, we're bringing the Medic, the Leader, and the Mighty Behemoth. To start the game, the models need to be placed on the table. To determine which model gets placed first, players will roll off to see who gets to place the first model. In this case, the USCR player rolled a 4, and the Chemvar player rolled a 9, so the Chemvar player will be placing the first model. Players then take turns placing one model until all models are deployed. The deployment zone in Mercs is one card turned sideways from your starting board edge. A model can be placed anywhere within this 
along the entire stretch of the table. The model cannot, however, be placed outside of that zone, even by a fraction. An important thing to note is that in marks, facing matters. With that, the first model is placed. This will continue until both players have placed all of their models on the board. After all models are deployed, a single dice will be rolled for each model. This determines what initiative the model is acting on the table. The medic rolled a 6. The assault leader rolled a 9. And the behemoth rolled a 6. This will be compared with your opponent's initiative and all models will act in descending order. To start things off, the Kemvar Assassin, the Monkey Wrench, both rolled a 10, so they'll be going first. But which one of them goes first? Remember how I talked about reaction when we were talking about cards? The reaction of the Assassin is a 7, while the Monkey Wrench has a reaction of 5, so the reaction of the Assassin is greater and he will be going first. If they had been the same, both actions would happen simultaneously. To start things off, the Kemvar Assassin will move. To move, you place the card with the large circle around the model's base. This can be turned to any direction that he wants. It's important to note that moving backwards costs 2 MP and moving forward costs 1 MP. On the Assassin's card, he has the speedy PA, granting him an extra PA, bringing his total MP to use to 3. To move the model, he can move into any of the three circles or cutouts on the card. In this case, he decides to use the side cutout and move forward. It's also important to note that he can turn during a move up to 90 degrees for free. To continue to move his final 2 MP. Uh oh, the, sn the assassin is now caught out in the open. Luckily, Merckx has a solution for that. The solution is called Snap to Cover. Once per activation, the model can move one base distance as long as he ends in cover. With that, he hides behind the side of the truck, giving himself some cover. Cover is extremely important in Merckx, and we will go over that in the shooting phase. Next comes the Monkey Wrench, who also had a 10. He is going to try and ascend a level of elevation get on top of this mountain. To do this, we measure the distance, moving up an elevation that is a card length or less costs 1 MP. The monkey wrench has 2 MP so he can still move one card length. He is then going to try and snap to cover to the rock wall. Unfortunately for the monkey wrench, he misjudged the distance and is unable to snap into cover next to the wall. Now that these characters have activated, we remove the dice from their card, signifying that they have completed their action. Alternatively, you could flip the card over or turn it sideways, but I prefer removing the dice. 
the USCR leader sees the monkey wrench out in the open and decides to take a shot. His weapon makes two attacks versus one target with an FN of 7. Being at a higher elevation, this drops down to a 6. Now normally, a model caught out in the open would reduce the FN by another one, making it a 5. But with the Kemvar active camo, it actually gives him partial cover, bringing it back up to a 7. He rolls two dice, and he hits with one of them. The other one fails. The weapon strength of the attack is a 2. The armor value of the Kembar Monkey Wrench is a 2, so this will cause 1 blood. He will also need to make an armor failure check on a 7 up. Unfortunately for the Kemvar Monkey Wrench, he rolls a 5 and his armor is broken. This also means with Kemvar that his active camouflage will go away and now he is stuck out in the open until he can fix his armor. The Medic and the Behemoth are both tied, but the Medic has a stronger reaction so he will be going first. He decides to move up to the front of the cliff. Next the Behemoth goes. He has a whopping 0 MP, but with the speed it makes him a 1 MP model. Lastly we have the Assault Leader, who is also going to move 2 MP. At the start of round 2, we re-roll initiatives for each model. This time, the Behemoth scored a 10, so he will be going first. The Medic and the Monkey Wrench both score a 9, and they have a, both have a reaction of 5, so their actions will be happening simultaneously. The Assassin and the Assault Leader both have a 3 and a reaction 7, so they will be acting simultaneously and the Assault Leader for USCR has a 1, so he will be going last. Behemoth activates first with a 10. He decides he's going to open up on the Kemvar Monkey Wrench. His, this model, shoots an extended T, or Big T, template. It starts at his base, you pick a direction, and it goes off in that direction unlimited. Any model that's covered up by the template takes three shots at an FN of eight. Unfortunately for the medic, because he's standing in front of the USCR behemoth, he is also going to be hit by this attack. Let's start with the medic. Yes, he's shooting his friend. He will be taking three shots against the medic, but let's factor out these modifiers. The Behemoth has a default FN of 8. He is in the model's back arc, which brings it down 2 to a 6. He's also within a card length of the model, bringing it down to a 4. So on a 4 or higher, he will be shooting into the Medic. And we get a 5, a 7, and a 1. So two shots go into the Medic's back. Because of the weapon strength is a 2, the medic will be taking 2 blood and will have to make 2 armor failure checks for the 2 hits. We roll the army armor failure checks and he passes both. The behemoth next takes 3 shots on the Kemvar Monkey Wrench. The Kemvar Monkey Wrench has no active camo, so he is considered out in the open now. The behemoth has an FN of 8. The monkey wrench is out in the open, so the behemoth will need a 7 or higher to hit the monkey wrench. And the behemoth gets a 7. This will cause 1 blood, but he will not have to make an armor check because his armor is already broken. Next, the behemoth will try to shoot at the assassin who is hiding behind the truck. Because of his active camo, he counts it as full cover. The behemoth has an FN of 8. Being at a higher elevation, he is going to be an FN of 7, but with the active camo of the assassin, it actually brings it up 3 to a 10. Fortunately, with a 2, 2, and a 1, 
the behemoth does not inflict any damage on the assassin. Next, the monkey wrench and the medic both activate simultaneously, and they both use their respective packs. The monkey wrench uses a repair check to automatically fix his armor and get himself back up and running with the active camo. The medic decides to use his medic pack to heal the one blood that the behemoth inflicted. He also decides to snap the cover along the wall to get out of the front arc in case the behemoth wants to rip again next turn. Next we have a tie between the Kemvar Assassin and the Kemvar Assault Leader. They both decide they're going to try and close the gap and move their full MP. The Kemvar snaps around the corner of the truck. The Assassin moves up against the wall and decides to not use his last MP. The Assault Leader decides to shoot the ground next to the Assassin with his ice grenade gun, hoping to catch the Assassin in the blast. He picks a spot marked with the dice on the board and shoots. His FN of his ice gun is 5, but hitting the ground which is out in the open reduces it to a 4. He rolls a single die. He scores a 7. That's a hit. The blast radius on an ice grenade gun is 1 card. The Assassin and he is now frozen in place for three rounds and can't be removed except with a flamethrower. Because the assassin was hit with the attack, we have to see if the ice grenade made his armor fail. The assassin has a armor failure check of six up. He rolls a seven, so his armor is fine. At the start of round three, we re-roll initiatives. The highest initiative this time was for the medic for USCR. They rolled a 9, followed by the Assault Leader at an 8, the Behemoth at a 7, the Assassin at a 5, the Monkey Wrench at a 4, and finally the USCR Assault Leader at a 1. The USCR Medic decides to close the gap on the Kembar Assault Leader. He moves 2 MP. The Assault Leader decides that he is going to confront the medic in melee combat decides to close the gap by snapping to cover to the medic model. Melee attack. You first look at the reaction of the model you're attacking. In this case, the USCR medic. He has a reaction of 5, so the model will need a 5 or greater to hit. But the assault leader has plus 2 melee, bringing this from a 5 down to a 3. The sword gives the assault leader one attack versus one target, so we roll one dice and we try to get a three or higher. We get a six. The weapon strength of the attack is normally a two, but with the brawler PA, he actually gets a three weapon strength. This is greater than the armor value of the medic and will inflict one blood. The medic will now have to make a single armor failure check to see if his armor stays up after the attack. He rolls an 8. With an armor failure value of 5, he is all set. The USCR behemoth is next. He decides to shoot at the Kemvar monkey wrench. He'll be using his extended T template, which will cover the assassin. Although, the USCR behemoth cannot see the assassin, so those shots will actually not be resolved. The only shots that will be resolved are against the Kemvar monkey wrench. So let's take three shots and see what happens. The USCR Behemoth has an FN of 8. The Kemvar Monkey Wrench is out in the open, but with his active camo now up, he gets a plus one half cover bonus, making it a 9 or higher on A 4, 4, and 6 are rolled, so three bullets whiz past the Kemvar Monkey Wrench. The Kemvar Assassin is basically ineffective this round. He can't move because of the ice grenade, and he can't shoot anybody. He either doesn't have line of sight to the model, or it's outside the range of his pistol. The Kemvar Monkey Wrench decides that he's not in a good spot, even with this active camouflage, he doesn't want to rely on it. He uses his climb PA to move one level of elevation down at no cost. He then decides to use his CCM under his semi-auto rifle to fire and move 
at a negative 1 MP penalty. With 2 MP left, he can still move one movement point. He turns as part of his movement to position himself aimed at the medic to cover to move behind the crates so he's out of line of sight of the behemoth. The Kemvar Monkey Wrench gets two attacks versus one target at an FN of 7. Because the medic is at a higher elevation, this goes up to an 8, but the assault leader is flanking the USCR medic, so it'll go back down to a 7. Adding to this the fire and move penalty of 2 FN, the monkey wrench needs a total of 9 F 9 or higher in order to hit. He rolls 2 dice and gets a 5 and a 5. Neither hit. Finally, the Assault Leader activates for the USCR. He sees a sliver of the Kemvar Monkey Wrench and decides to take a shot. He snaps the cover and opens fire with two shots on the Kemvar Monkey Wrench. The USCR Assault Leader has two shots against one target at an FN of 7. With higher elevation, this drops it down to an FN of 6. The Kemvar Monkey Wrench has partial cover, but because of his active camo, this gives him full cover. This turns into a plus three bonus, bringing the total FN that the assault leader needs to hit the Kemvar monkey wrench up to a nine. He rolls with a roll of two nines. He inflicts two blood and kills the Kemvar monkey wrench. All right, guys. So I hope you enjoyed that. We cut it off at three rounds. Most games go to six to eight, but I think you've got all of the different mechanics that you can use in the quick start rules in that little demo and you can kind of see how they interact and what different tactics you can use while you play. Um, we went over shooting, moving, PAs for climb, different other PAs, uh, we had melee combat, we had grenades going off, we had uh, machine guns with their template weapon attacks and how that plays out with people in different line of sight and over the different FNs. It's all there. Anything you need to play should be in this video. Uh, if you have a question about how something works, you can leave a comment below. You can also leave a question on the rules forum over at mercsminis.com or on our forum at snaptocover.com slash forum. Uh, if you wanna see how the game plays with two players playing with full five-man squads, all the ACMs, all the rules, uh, you can check our video here. And what else? Please, if you like this video, share it with a friend. That's the best compliment you guys can give us is uh, spreading the word about this video. I think Mercs is a great game if you're into the miniature wargaming hobby already. If you're not, it's a great gateway game. Uh, if you play games but your friends don't, show them this video and maybe it'll convince them to, uh, to try the, give the hobby a try. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun. You spend hours and hours of entertainment value. You have all the terrain hobby, as you can see on this board, it took me, uh, what, two weeks? No, no, two months, two months, definitely not two weeks. Two months to try and get it all together, but it's it's awesome once you get it done. It's, it's just a lot of joy to play on. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any kind of questions, please leave it as a comment below. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Share it with your friends. Uh, we have a Facebook page at snaptocover.com or facebook.com slash snaptocover. We have our website at snaptocover.com and our Twitter feed is twitter.com slash snaptocover. So we'd love to hear from you guys. If you have anything, you know, feel free to reach out to us and we'll, uh, we'll get back to you on those. Uh, but until next time, always snap to cover. Snap to cover. <laughs> Tutorial.